Hi, my name is Jack Dean and I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I think Star Wars is such an important franchise because it really allows these stories to be told about hope and destiny and, and, and looking beyond yourself and looking beyond your situation. Um, so today I have a theory to share with everyone that's been cooking up for quite some time. I must say you're here sooner than expected. I'd also like to add that every bit of this theory is out of my own head. Um, there might be theories floating around out there that are similar, but, you know, on my honor as a Star Wars fan, I truly have not found anything like this. I've not read anything like this. That's good news. And if I did, I wouldn't feel the need to make a video about it because someone else has already done it. Um, so, without further ado, here is my theory about Rey and Episode Nine. So this theory has been formulating inside my head ever since I finished the first movie, The Force Awakens, and I saw Rey's Force Vision. The theory has been changed, modified slightly after I saw The Last Jedi, and then especially after I saw the latest Episode Nine trailer. So since I'm a college kid, I'm going to give you my thesis statement. Rey, from the latest Star Wars trilogy, is a clone. Now. When I say clone, I don't mean clone trooper like from Kamino. We take great pride in our combat education. No, no, no. What I mean is that she was a clone created using Skywalker DNA, and I believe that it was Emperor Palpatine who created her in an attempt to obtain a new apprentice. Sounds like a lot, but I'm going to break it all down. And I think the easiest way to do this is to split this up into sections, just so we can keep it all together. So the first section is going to be called, Why did Palpatine do this? The second one is, How did he do this? The third one is, How does it connect to the latest trilogy? And the fourth one is, The evidence from the latest trilogy as to why I think that, and sort of what's going on inside my head. So first up, Why did Palpatine do this? So by this point, it's quite well known that Palpatine was looking for a new apprentice and a way to replace Darth Vader. From the moment that Anakin was defeated on Mustafar, <laughs> Palpatine knew that he would never be as strong as he once was. Vader served Palpatine well for a time, but toward the end of his life, it became clear that he needed to uh, switch things up, get Vader out of there, get some new blood in. This is especially clear in the fight between Luke and Vader in the second Death Star. Take your father's place at my side. Not only that, but Palpatine has done this before. Kill him. When Anakin and Count Dooku are fighting, Palpatine encourages Anakin to kill Dooku, and so that Anakin can come in, take his place, and become the new apprentice. So this isn't out of line of what Palpatine does. So this is kind of why I think Palpatine would be working on replicating Skywalker DNA. He knew Vader was getting weak, he knew he needed someone new, so he started toying with the idea of making something new. Okay, point number two. How did Palpatine do this? There are two ways that come to mind when it comes to how Palpatine might be attempting DNA replication. One is that he could simply be using Vader's DNA in order to experiment. Perhaps when Vader is chilling in the back to tank, Palpatine swoops in, snags some Vader blood without him knowing. The second way, aka the more fun way, it's not the Jedi way, is that Palpatine somehow managed to obtain the severed hand of Luke Skywalker from the Battle of Bespin when he lost it. I know you might be thinking, well, that seems way more complex than just taking Darth Vader's DNA, and you'd be totally right, except you're forgetting the rule of cool, the idea of craggly old Palpatine rummaging around and working with Luke Skywalker's severed hand is a much more satisfying image, if you ask me. Also, the lightsaber was lost with Luke's hand, so if Maz Kanata happened to find the lightsaber, which she obviously did, then presumably the hand might have been found too. Another thing to think about is the cloning in this universe. It's obviously not something too difficult to do. I'm just a simple man trying to make my way in the universe. As it was used to make an entire army just based on one man's DNA. Lastly, I wanna bring up the fact that much of the new trilogy has actually been inspired by books and comics that were written after Return of the Jedi that are no longer canon. For instance, Kylo Ren is directly based off of Jason Solo, which is Han Solo and Leia's son. He follows a sim similar path where he comes from the light and he fades into the darkness, similar to how Kylo operates right now. Another example 
is that of the Dark Empire storyline, where Luke Skywalker actually uses a force projection, just like we see him do in The Last Jedi. What's even more interesting is that in that very same story of the Dark Empire, Palpatine makes use of cloning technology. In this story, he uses clones in order to live beyond the natural years by transferring his essence into new bodies. Okay, so how does this connect to the latest trilogy? So if Emperor Palpatine's goal was to use Skywalker DNA to create a new apprentice, what happened after he died in Return of the Jedi? This is where the theory gets kind of tricky because, well, we don't really have a lot to go on. We don't have comics, we don't have books, we don't have previous movies, we just have our imagination. So, at the risk of sounding too fan fiction-y, I'm going to try and piece together what I think might be going on. This all begins with Supreme Leader Snoke. I'll start by telling you what I do know to be true. There's absolutely a connection going on between Palpatine and Supreme Leader Snoke. For starters, they obviously were both in charge of very similar empirical structures. You have the Empire, and then you have the First Order. They operate in a nearly identical way, with even some of the same goals. I mean, Snoke even created a Death Star-like machine to destroy planets, just like Palpatine did. The next piece of evidence is in Snoke's apparel. When reading through the Episode 8 Visual Dictionary, I paid close attention to Snoke. What I noticed was this ring he wears. The ring is made up of two parts. The first is the obsidian jewel that sits on top of it. Now, this jewel is said to be from Darth Vader's castle on Mustafar. The second is the ring's base, which has inscriptions on it from what is called the Duarte. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. While the name may not ring any bells, upon further investigation, I learned the Duarte were four philosophers that were integral to the creation of the Republic. Now, this takes place about 1019 BBY, before Battle of Yavin, aka a long time ago, but not in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> so how does this connect to Palpatine? Well because he has the exact same Duarte statues in his office. Now, not much is known about these four philosophers, except that they were very controversial. So clearly Palpatine and Snoke both agreed with their ideals, whatever they may be, enough to place them on their body and office, respectively. So maybe Snoke is an admirer, friend, or student of Palpatine, but what if it wasn't just simply that? What if Snoke is, in fact, Palpatine? For the sake of just choosing a theory and running with it, let's break this down as if it were true. We already saw that in the old comics, Palpatine creates clones in order to preserve his body. What if the Snoke we are seeing is simply one of the clones Palpatine created and the body and mind is still in the process of healing? This isn't unheard of even in the Star Wars canon as of right now. For instance, in the TV show Rebels, minor spoiler alert, <laughs> One of the major characters dies, and then he is seemingly a part of this wolf animal. It's as if his essence sort of lives inside of it. So we have direct proof that it's possible for someone's force essence to transfer to another living organism. So maybe Palpatine is using this Snoke body in order to re-manifest himself. Maybe. But how does this all fit in with Rey? Because this is a theory about Rey, after all. So it's clear how much Palpatine respects the Skywalker power. He took on Anakin, then he wanted Luke, and if we're to believe that Snoke is Palpatine, then he also wanted Kylo Ren. However, I believe that Palpatine had already been working on this Skywalker DNA cloning process before he even knew about Kylo Ren. My theory is that Palpatine created clones of the Skywalker DNA and sent them randomly all over the galaxy. There's this particular line in The Last Jedi where Supreme Leader Snoke says, Darkness rises and light to, to meet it. So was Snoke slash Palpatine simply waiting for one of the clones to rise and fight the First Order? I see this as sort of a test that Palpatine slash Snoke was creating for all of these clones they spread out throughout the galaxy in order to have the strongest of the creations rise to meet the challenge of the dark side. All right, point four, evidence from the new trilogy. In The Force Awakens, 
Rey has that iconic force vision where she touches Luke's lightsaber. The reason she may be seeing all these Skywalker memories is because she herself has that Skywalker DNA and is capable of accessing that. We see memories from Luke and Bespin, and we even hear Obi-Wan saying, these are your first steps. Perhaps this was sort of briefly tapping into one of the memories of a younger Anakin Skywalker when he was first learning to become a Jedi. Next piece of evidence is all Rey remembers of her parents are them flying away from Jakku. Was that Palpatine simply leaving her on that planet to either rise or die? This also makes me wonder if that boy on Canto Bite at the very end of The Last Jedi could be a Skywalker clone DNA thing too? Next, Rey has this unique ability to connect with Kylo Ren through the Force, but this is not the first time it's happened. This has actually happened quite a few times before. Luke connects with Vader at the end of Empire Strikes Back, Kylo connects with Leia in The Last Jedi, Luke reaches out and connects with Leia in The Last Jedi as well, you notice anything? Yeah, you do. All of these have Skywalker blood. So the ability for Rey to connect with Kylo kind of tells me that they share that Skywalker blood in some way. All right, next. In the latest Star Wars Episode Nine trailer, we got a lot of new information. What stood out to me was the fact that the trailer ends with the team looking at the fallen Death Star, the last place Palpatine was seen alive. Perhaps they were going there to discover something about Rey's past? What, what if they get inside and they find this chamber with unused clones and Bacta tanks, all containing Skywalker DNA? Not only that, but we can hear the laugh of Palpatine at the end. <laughs> when I heard this laugh, I knew right away I needed to actually make this theory into a video and so I could share it with people. Now, these last three pieces of evidence are by far the most compelling and deserve to be paid the most attention to. Firstly, in The Last Jedi, as Rey has another Force-like vision, she begins to see infinite multitudes of herself. When she asks to see her parents, she is presented with just herself looking back. The multiple versions of herself are a hint at the idea that she is one of many clones. She is presented with herself because she has no parents. She's a singular entity created by Palpatine. Second, the original script to The Force Awakens actually had Luke Skywalker's hand and lightsaber floating through space. The lightsaber would end up landing on Jakku. Now, although did, this did not make it into the final film, it's clear that the writers were toying with this idea of Luke's hand and potentially his lineage and DNA. Lastly, in 2017, part 25 of a huge Darth Vader comic series released. This comic focused only on Vader traversing a force vision of his own. In this vision, he leaves his body and begins to walk through sort of the story of his life. During this, it is officially revealed that Palpatine did in fact put Anakin inside of Shmi Skywalker's body. Palpatine tells this iconic story about Darth Plagueis, which was Palpatine's old master. In the story, he tells Anakin that Plagueis had the ability to create life. This is kind of what connects it all together. Palpatine, I think, has had this ability to create life for a very long time. Rey is just the next iteration of his creation, more powerful than Vader and Luke. To wrap things up, I also want to point out the new title for Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. Now, the producers have gone on record that saying these nine movies are the Skywalker saga. This further supports my claim about Rey being a Skywalker, but again, not through birth. Why else would the name of the final movie be called this? Yes, Kylo is a Skywalker, but he's not the lead. Rey is. Therefore, I think that title is referring to her. Finally, to talk a little bit more about the title, my dear friend Jake Lynn asked me if the Skywalker in the title is referring to a, a new age of force wielders. This immediately had my head spinning, so I began looking at past titles. So what do we have? The Return of the Jedi, Revenge of the Sith, and now it's The Rise of Skywalker. George Lucas has gone on record saying that Star Wars is like poetry. It rhymes. So if they rhyme, mm -hmm. every stanza kind of rhymes with the last one. And although Lucas is not a part of this new trilogy, his visions persist. Many of the old team is still working on the film, and J.J. Abrams is clearly a big admirer. 
So if this is true, that Star Wars rhymes, we have Return, Revenge, and Rise. Now, the first two of the titles end with factions, Jedi and Sith. What if, as Jake mentioned, Skywalker is referring to a new faction somewhere in the middle of Jedi and Sith? A Skywalker was always destined to bring balance of the Force. All right, so I know I brought up a lot of points, so I'm going to leave this image on the screen so you can reference back to it. All right, and that's it. Uh, to anyone watching, thank you so much for checking this out. Uh, I really just felt the need that I needed to make this theory video because uh, I really think I'm onto something here. But um, I really would be interested to hear if anyone has something to add to that or if they think I might have had a discrepancy, anything at all, just let me know. Uh, and thanks so much.